All right. Give a hand to the Lord. Give a hand of praise to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Mindful that it wasn't by my doing. It was only by your doing because of your love for me and for all mankind. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Um, I'd like to welcome you to another hour of power in God's holy and dynamic, life-changing, life-saving uh, word. Um, first and foremost, thanking God the Father for this esteemed plan that he had and purpose in all mankind's life. Um, God the Son, my personal Lord and Savior, and the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, uh, for fulfilling God's plan and purpose for mankind high up on the cross almost 2,000 years ago and on the third day early resurrecting from the dead bodily and God the Holy Spirit uh, the superintendent and the captain of the esteemed ship the esteemed ark of grace uh, known as the body of Christ who sails it along the seashores, uh, I mean, onto the seashores of glory to be with the Lord of glory in eternal glory. Um, been a good week, challenging week, um, but as a Christian, if there's no challenges, something is usually not right in one's walk. Um, there's always something looming. There's always something occurring. Um, but nonetheless, the Lord is in total control um we were last week engaging on a new theme titled it's time you ready the lord is now saying it's time you ready and there's a new way uh, that one gets ready uh, and the time is coming we were in John 1, and we didn't hit on the John 1, 35 to 39, because we went, did a little background check, and we saw the story of John the Baptist um, at the Jordan, and how he was questioned uh, by some of the religious uh, members, the members of the religious sect of Israel. And um, we're going to embark on a uh, continuation on that today. Um, before we do, I'd like to say hello to my mother out there. Uh, thank you, Lord. All these years I waited. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I have my moms. I'm able to embrace her. I'm able to hug her and kiss her and just spend time with her. She's about to be 90, which is pretty astounding that's a uh, tall walk uh, we pray together we uh, you know discuss things together and you know I just like to say hello to her and I love you um, I like to say hello to Mary and Stephanie family members at the home also uh, to Nay and Talia um, heard an update good praise report where a young girl who was told she'd never walk again bones were falling apart and brittle and uh, many times over in the hospital uh, now about to go home in a matter of a couple of months and, and the Lord is a healer the Lord is a healer and he is the deliverer out of any and all of our afflictions so if you are being afflicted mentally emotionally physically spiritually at this hour this time, this moment, this message is for you. It is time. Are you ready? You know, the Lord is saying it's time to get ready, to get right with him. Um, because the Lord Jesus is coming. And when he comes, that's it. The time of grace is over. And it shall be the time of judgment. Um, and we have to get ready. 
Um, so, let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for this opportunity. We uh, ask just sweetly and shortly that you can put your message in us, that we may understand what are you trying to say to us, what are you trying to put in us, and through the Holy Spirit, what are you trying to work through us, and help us to be servants, humble servants, and partner up to be part of your mission to bring you the glory and the mission being that you can work through us to save others by planting and watering in their life we thank you lord we lift this up in the name of jesus and say amen amen um before i go forward um if you're listening i'd like you to lift up your right hand extend it out and just pray with me um, as we pray for the people of Ukraine. Uh, Father, in the name of Jehovah Shalom, you, the God of peace, we lift ourselves up to you, O oh Lord, by faith, because we've seen many times over that by faith you healed us, you delivered us, you blessed us, you brought us out of dark places. You brought us out of storms. You brought us out of valley lows. You brought us out of hard times, tough times, broken times. Many times over, you delivered us, O oh Lord. And we believe because we have seen with our own eyes. We are a testimony that you are indeed the one and true living God who as you did with the Hebrews through Egypt and through the wilderness, time in and time out again in the land of Israel, you can do for your crane, Lord. We lift ourselves up, Lord, asking that there's a man on earth right now who has puffed himself up, O oh Lord, lifted himself up above all mankind, O oh Lord, and making himself judge, O oh Lord, of who is to live and who is to die, O oh Lord? Who is to have freedom and who is to be shackled down as slaves, O oh Lord? Who is to have prosperity and who is to have uh, poverty, O oh Lord? Who are the ones that are uh, looked upon at the top tier and those who are discriminated against at the bottom tier? Those who are uh, called the esteemed and the privileged. And then, O oh Lord, you, O oh Lord, we, we know because you told Moses, you see, you, you've heard their cries and you've seen the afflictions and you know who is at the hand of, Lord. And you told Moses you were sending him to make a change, O oh Lord, to free your people from the agony of that taskmaster, O oh Lord, the hands of Pharaoh, O oh Lord. And we have a man on earth acting like he is Pharaoh. And he's even afflicting your own Jews. And he's mocking them and putting them down. And saying similarities as to Hitler, O oh Lord. And we know that this pleases you mightily, O oh Lord. But we know in this time of grace you extend, O oh Lord, to all mankind. Mercy are new. Mercies are new each and every day, O oh Lord, because of your love. But we ask in the name of Jehovah Nisi, you. God of victory, O oh Lord, please, O oh Lord, remove this man from office, O oh Lord. He has no place in a position of leadership. He has no place leading a nation. He has no place being the judge of who lives and who dies. He has no place using his power, O oh Lord, in racial and discriminatory manners, O oh Lord. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, that you can remove him from office, all office, O oh Lord, that he go out like you did with Nebuchadnezzar. You put him out in the wilderness, O oh Lord. And if he be that he come back and give you glory, we know you are a restorer, O oh Lord. But right now, people are dying, Lord. They are being slaughtered and butchered faster than cows, faster than, uh, than pigs, faster than livestock, O oh Lord, throughout the world. They're being bombed. They're being shot. They're being uh, tortured, O oh Lord, if they're caught. 
that be in jail, O oh Lord. And even when humanitarian aid comes, O oh Lord, that's being shot down and put down along with the people, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, we come to you praying dearly, O oh Lord, for these people, O oh Lord. You who show no partiality, O oh Lord, and love all because Jesus died for all, O oh Lord. We come to you, O oh Lord, united. We pray that right now many more are adding to this prayer, O oh Lord. This is very, very important, Lord, because the world is watching. And we pray part two, O oh Lord, for NATO, O oh Lord, making one excuse after another excuse because they're in fear of getting into a war with this power mongrel, with this monster, O oh Lord, full of demons, O oh Lord, and prejudicial demons, O oh Lord. And we know that many of these people in the world that are leaders, O oh Lord, uh, claim to be, O oh Lord, believers in you, believers in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, claim to be Christians, O oh Lord. doesn't matter what the denomination is. They are uh, believers of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. And you've not given us a power, uh, a spirit of fear, but of power, Lord. All power and all authority reigns in us, lives in us, breathes through us. And we have that right now, Lord, and we look to you from which come and find help, O oh Lord. And we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, empower, endower, and lift up NATO, O oh Lord, that they can get out of this closet of fear, O oh Lord, this closet of politics. All over the world we hear, we'll send you, they don't need humanitarian aid. They don't need money. They don't need weapons. They need us to get involved. And Father, in the name of Jesus, for politics sake and for fear's sake, the world is just watching a nation being slaughtered, oh Lord. It's not hitting their home, so they're not concerned about it. It's hitting someone else's home, Lord. And we know that you love all mankind, Lord. And we come to you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, pleading, oh Lord, crying with an outpouring, oh Lord, as your son did, vehement tears upon the cross, those broken tears of Hannah, oh Lord. We come to you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. Put this world together, Lord, in a powerful way, Lord, and let them know we stand for right. We stand for good. We stand for you, O oh Lord, and no more shall people be slaughtered. Let them not have a fear of nuclear weapons. Let them not have a fear of the retaliation of this monster because to those who are Christians, they need to look at your word and says that says, uh, no weapon can be formed against us that shall prosper. And if you, God, we know by faith are with us, no one can be against us. And if we speak your word, it shall go out and accomplish the purpose that you set it forth for, Father. And we know that uh, you never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. Just as you did for Israel, you can do for us because this is also affecting Israel. And Israel has been quiet, Lord. Their own kind are being slaughtered and killed as in the days of Hitler, Lord, and they are not speaking. People are speaking in politic, polit uh, political ways, Lord, but what you need, Father, is what we pray for, for people to now start acting, not talking, acting to help save those, oh Lord, because everybody matters and everybody counts. And uh, This prayer is that NATO and even non-NATO nations say enough is enough. The people of Ukraine count. They matter. Let them come to the borders, oh Lord. They don't want to do anything about the air, Father, that the bombs are coming from. The uh, United States is saying they don't want to come into the land of Ukraine because they're not NATO. Well, they're human, Lord. They're human just like the United States, just like Europe and everywhere else. They are human beings. Speak into the hearts of these fear, fear uh, these leaders that are walking in fear and politics, Lord, and let them know of your displeasure, Lord, because you bless them, okay? You bless their nations, and there's one nation that's being taken apart, picked apart, as if they don't matter or count, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this prayer. And I pray, Father, that everybody keep praying this prayer each and every day and night. Until you answer, Lord, because we know your answer is coming. You've revealed it, Father, to me. It's coming, Lord. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray and say, Amen. 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 Oh, Lord. Anyway, we need to keep that nation in our heart and pray from our heart. Because as we pray, God can answer simultaneously. He can answer before we even finish the prayer. We need God's supernatural intervention in this situation. And we need to start praying like we really mean it. Um, it breaks my heart to hear all this political mumbo jumbo and all this. Uh, we against Russia, we don't want to start a third world war. Well, a lot of these leaders are believers in Jesus. Where's your faith? Where's your faith in this word? Nowhere in this Bible does it say a nuclear war is going to end it all. Nowhere. Where is your faith? Anyway. Ukraine, I love you. I love you all dearly. Y'all in my hearts. All right. So John, chapter one. We're embarking on it's time. You ready? Give me one second, please. And now we came, we come to an interesting turn of events. Um, and John 1 29, we see the next day after what we talked about last week, which was John 19 through 28. Uh, John the Baptist sees Jesus and coming unto him, and he says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Now, I, I see. In another version here that I'm using, it says, um, well, I'm going to skip that because of time. I'm looking at the time right now. But John is seeing Messiah. He's seeing deliverer. He's seeing the healer of Israel. The one that God Almighty spoke to him about. Um, it's verse 30 that sticks out to me because a lot of people in this world attested Jesus being man, man only. He wasn't who this word says he is. But he says this is, I want to go to this version because this version has a little different. It's called the voice. It says, he is the one I have been saying will come after me who existed long before me and is much greater than I am. Now, yes, he's indicating his humanity, but he's also indicating divinity because he's indicating way long before he was. Just like he said, it, Jesus said to the people in John, I believe it's 858, before Abraham was, I am. So he is saying that before John the Baptist was, Jesus, I am, always was. Okay? And is much greater than he is. Now, John is a prophet. The only be one off is higher than a prophet. And that's up above in the heavens. The one that sent the prophets. So, um, he was speaking to his disciples at this moment. And he was letting them know that um, Jesus is, in fact, the one that the scriptures were talking about. And that God, the Father... Uh, attested to who Jesus was when Jesus came to be baptized by John the Baptist, uh, a dove descended from heaven, which is symbolic for the Holy Spirit of God, okay, uh, rested upon him. And um, uh, he bore this record, this testimony that God had spoken to him. And this is a quick snippet because in verse 30. Five, it says again the next day, okay, after John stood, okay, I'm going to go back to this voice version. Um, it says, uh, let's see, hold on a second. Okay, the day after John saw him again as he was visiting with two of his disciples, as Jesus walked by, he announced again, uh, do you see him? 
this man is the Lamb of God. God's sacrifice to cleanse our sins. Now, they had already become well aware of uh, the Day of Atonement, which was once a year, the high priest would go into the holy, holiest place in the tabernacle or in these days, the temple, and perform the sacrifice for the entire nation, for their sins for that year. Well, that was atoning for their sins. This is just like right here what John is saying. This is God's sacrifice. Okay. The, ho the, high, holy, uh, the high priest sacrificed to God. God is bringing the sacrifice to man. Man would bring a sacrifice to God on the Day of Atonement. God has now sent the sacrifice that will appease him once and for all because it says uh, that God sacrificed to cleanse our sins. Um, and uh, uh, it says here in 35 that when this occurred, okay, and in 36, uh, when looking at Jesus, he walked and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, okay. Now in verse 37, it says that a, and this is my first point, when it's time as it is now, okay, the time is now to get with Jesus. God is stipulating. He's out. Are you ready? It's, it's time to get right with me. Are you ready? Um, a decision was made by a pair of his disciples, of John the Baptist's disciples. Hearing the gospel, okay, the good news about Jesus that John the Baptist spoke here, okay, the day before and now, that this is the way to get right with God when it comes to your sins being cleansed and washed away, okay, which is what we do here as in this, at this hour and throughout the world when pastors or preachers or whomever it is uh, preaches the good news of Jesus Christ, getting right with God through God's sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Um, step one is a decision has to be made. God has sent his last and final answer, the way to get right with him, the way to be pronounced not guilty by him, the way to have an eternal hope uh, through this last uh, offering, which is Jesus Christ up on the cross almost 2,000 years ago when he died for our sins. God has done his part. Jesus has done his part. The Holy Spirit is now the one that is waiting for you to call upon Jesus Christ and say, save me. And when your heart means it and, it, and it's ready because the decision that you've made is, I want out of where I'm at and I want in with you, Jesus I want in, please. We all have to respond to this here message. This here message from God requires a response from every human being, period. I don't care your skin color. I don't care your status in society. I, I, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what color you are, age, male, female, a response is required to this here statement. God has extended a way for all mankind to get ready, I mean, to get right with him. And all he's saying, it is time. Tonight, right before this hour is up, is not guaranteed to you. There are unfortunately going to be some folks that I'm not going to be breathing no more on earth before I finish this message. And my prayer is that somehow, some way, uh, they heard this message from either me or someone in this world in their lifetime, and they got right. Because it's time right now. Are you ready? It's going to be a little late when you get on the other side. God's not going to say to you on the other side, hey, it's time. Are you, are you ready now? Uh-uh. It's a wrap by then. You're going to wish that back then, in this here life here, 
you took the time out, the time we don't get back. You took the time out and the opportunity which we don't get back to have say, yes, Lord, I'm ready. Save me. Oh, Lord Jesus, save me. I believe you are, this, you are my Savior. Uh, I believe you came here to save me. Okay? And, and, and I ask and I beg as a sinner who does not deserve it, please, I open up my heart and my life. Save me. I, I pray someone says this, uh, calls this prayer out, calls this request out to Lord Jesus Christ, and that they believe he died. And three days later, he woke up uh, resurrected bodily. Okay? That they have an eternal hope. Right now, my hope is in Jesus Christ. He's coming. Does It doesn't say when. Okay? But we know he is coming. Okay? And only believers are going to hear uh, the, the, the sound from the angel. Okay? Only believers are going to hear that. Okay? And only believers at that time will be involved in being raptured up, caught up. Okay? Uh, Mid-air with the Lord and taken away in new heavenly bodies. Only believers are going to have that esteemed privilege. To the non-believers, they're going to see a supernatural phenomenon they've never seen, and they, and it may shake them to the core of their soul, okay, knowing that, oh yeah, they missed, they missed out. It really, the Bible really was true. Uh, I'm going to tell you some of the most shocked ones are going to be atheists, okay? Uh, all those philosophers, all those scientists, they're going to be scratching the, 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 the head of their soul saying, this stuff really was true. And, and, and now that I'm alive here, uh, if that's true, then that means that part two coming up is true. And I'm screwed. Um, I'm, I'm getting ready to go through some stuff that uh, I, this Bible has spoken to in part two. It's called the tribulation period. Now you're into judgment period. Uh, so... Uh, everything that the Bible has spoken about up to this point has been on point. I, I just don't understand if you have laid faith in all kinds of different situations and times in your life and it's not amounted to what you really wanted and you still have this restlessness in your soul, this uneasiness in your heart, this heaviness on your mind, and you know, you know deep down, giving Jesus a chance, it's really the only option you got left, okay? Which is the only option man really has anyway, okay? But that stubborn nature, that refusal to give in and, and let someone else control your every move, okay? And get the glory, okay? And that refusal to part ways with uh, your lifestyle, your wants, your desires uh, for what the Bible says is costing you. Okay, but here we see that after this gospel was preached unto uh, these two disciples, who many attest, we see one was Andrew and the other one attest was John, uh, the disciple John. Um, decision was made to follow Jesus. They don't know where Jesus was going. Never met him. Never talked to him. Um, only what John the Baptist has been talking about. And now this powerful message that John gives them, just on that message alone, it says, um, at that moment, the two disciples began to follow Jesus. Okay? And in, ver in, the, in the King James Version, it says, and the two disciples heard him, John the Baptist speak, and they followed Jesus. Well, one thing about Jesus is this. If you desire to come to Jesus, to be with Jesus, to follow Jesus, to, to grow and learn from Jesus, okay, to be saved by Jesus, there is one thing that this Bible really speaks that stands out. Jesus will never turn you away. He will never reject you. He will never turn anyone away who from their heart seeks him, desires to be with him, desires to go wherever he goes, learn from him, okay? It's not going to turn you away. I don't, I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter what you've done and what you are currently doing that would send you to hell, okay? 
It doesn't matter who you've done it to. It doesn't matter how many times you've done it. It doesn't matter how bad it is. Jesus will not turn you away. Okay. Now, why do I say that? Because in verse 38, it says, At that moment, the two disciples began to follow Jesus, who turned back to them saying, this is the voice version, what is it that you want? Hmm. King James says, the disciples heard John the Baptist speak and they followed Jesus, right? Then it says, verse 38, then Jesus turned and saw them following, said unto them, what seek ye? Okay. Now, Jesus wasn't spooked. Two men follow one person nowadays. People tend to turn around and get a little panicky. There's no panic in Jesus. Because first of all, he already knows when you're coming to him in the first place. Okay? And he knows what the motive is in your heart. That's why the Bible says, if you confess from your heart, out of your mouth. Okay? Our words that come out of our mouth come from our heart. So if from your heart you confess out your mouth and you... You believe in that heart. You confess out your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. He died and was resurrected. Okay. You are saved. Okay. If you believe the heart of this Bible that Jesus came for you, he died for you up on that cross. He was resurrected on the third day bodily for you to have a hope to show you that he has all power over sin, Satan, and death. And you have that once you accept him, you're saved. Okay? He turned to them and simply asked them, as he asked anyone out there right now that has not accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, and they're right now here listening, um, what is it that you seek? Or in this voice version, Okay, what is it that you want? What do you want from Jesus? Okay, now, uh, decision was made by these individuals, okay? Um, and in this decision, we see that they heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And mind you, he hadn't gone to the cross yet, okay? He had not gone to the cross yet, okay? We have the message after the cross. These two disciples didn't see anything going on yet, okay? There were no miracles, no, no, nothing supernatural taking place yet, okay? He hadn't entered that ministry yet, okay? They weren't on a word of promise through the prophet John the Baptist, okay? And, and, and that showed me something. These guys had been fellowshipping with John the Baptist and learning about this word, okay? You know, and they were believers who laid their faith in the word of promise, okay? That God one day was going to send Israel's Messiah. Now, it ain't like Jesus was walking, was rolling around rich, famous, statuesque, physically. They say his description physically was one that you would not want to look at, okay? He wasn't wealthy, okay? He wasn't living in some palace, okay? He wasn't, uh, you know, one of those famous individuals in the land, prominent individuals in the land. He was just an everyday average person, okay? People didn't even know who he was, okay? And just on that, they made a decision, okay, to come to Jesus. And in verse 38, it showed they had a desire, okay, when Jesus asked, that question he was asked what do you want he was asking them what are you looking for and why are you seeking me when jesus asks you if you're coming to jesus as these two were he turns around and asks you what is it that you want from him okay he's asking what are you looking for and why are you seeking me don't seek jesus because you want some money don't seek Jesus because you want a house. Don't seek Jesus because uh, you 
want your relationship with your uh, significant other turned around. Um, you know, don't make it about you. The only thing about you that it should be is that we are a sinner before we come to Jesus. And Jesus is the lamb, the sacrificial lamb that God sent. Okay. The true day of atonement for all humanity. Okay. A once and for all atonement. Okay. For our sins. We come to Jesus as sinners. And what we are, should be looking for from Jesus is to have our sins not, uh, not counted against us anymore. Washed away. Okay. Counted no more, brought up no more by God. Giving us a not guilty verdict and peace with God the Father. That is what we should be looking for. Step one. Okay. And the desire in verse 38 Okay, verse, first of all, last thing in verse 37 is that a decision to come to Jesus comes at a cost. Okay, and in verse 38, when Jesus asked, what are you looking for? Why are you seeking me? Okay, understand something. The direction and the destination that Jesus was traveling upon right now was away from where the disciples were currently located. It, it didn't say... And Jesus came and sat still. Okay. It, 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 it says here. And looking upon Jesus. He walked. Okay. He's traveling. He's on the move. Okay. He was not where they were. They were sinners. In need of a savior. Okay. Salvation was coming by them. Okay. It's upon mankind. As salvation comes upon you right now through this message. To, to turn. As these two individuals said. Leave what's going on right now in your life. Okay. Who you have in your life. What you got going on in your life. Good or bad. It's upon you to make a decision. Okay. Okay. That's going to cost you something. Okay. You know. And the cost is going to be basically... You got to let go of your life. You got to let go of what's going on in your life, okay, to come to Jesus, okay? It costs Jesus everything to save us. It don't cost nothing for us to have it, to have Jesus. The only one thing that it will cost, and really it's not, I don't count it as a big cost, is we got to let go. We got to we gotta want to stop trying to handle our life and our affairs our way and say, you know what? I need help. I'm going to humble myself before Jesus, call him out, say, help me. I, I can't do this no more. It, 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 it's, it's painful. It hurts. It just keeps coming in waves over and over and sometimes bigger waves. And I just keep like I'm fighting to go upstream in my life. I'm not getting anywhere. And at times I get washed back down to the bottom. I, I need Jesus because Jesus is going to put me on top. So, in 38, there was a desire, and they knew as Jesus was coming by that it's either now or never, okay? Now is the time. It's time, and they were ready, okay? Question is, are you ready, okay, as Jesus comes by with this message? Remember, before this message is finished, it's not guaranteed you'll be alive. And even after the message is finished, ain't no guarantee you'll be around for the next message next Sunday, as I will. I may not be here, okay? So, um, the disciples asked Jesus uh, a question after he said, what, what do you see? They said in the King James Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you dwell? In the voice version, it says, after Jesus said, what do you want? We'd like to know where you are staying, teacher, May we remain at your side today. Okay. Now. I took this as. The disciples were asking Jesus. Where he dwells. Meaning where you go. We go. Okay. Because John the Baptist didn't say anything negative about Jesus. This holy man John the Baptist. Whom these disciples knew was sent from God. Said. God 
sent Jesus. He just wasn't some ordinary Jesus. He was the lamb. Okay, there wasn't no one of the lambs, okay, a kind of lamb. He was the lamb. He was the sacrifice that would get them right with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the true and living God. He was the one that they would get right. Uh, they would have the opportunity to be right with. Okay. And Jesus was the key. He was the way. He was a new way. It was a, the promised way in the word. And here is that promise. So a new way, a new road has come upon Israel. Okay. And those who embark upon it will be blessed highly and favorably by the God of Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Now, their desire was basically where you go, we like to go. Now, mind you, they didn't ask what part of town you're going. What hood are you going to hang out in? Who are you rolling with? Um, where'd you come from? They ain't asking, hey, look, um, you know, um, you got any food over there? You got any 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 wine over there? Is there a place to sleep? Um, uh, they didn't ask the basic questions that we human beings always look for, okay? Didn't matter. All that mattered to them in their decision and desire was Jesus. It's time. Are you ready? Are you at that point where all that matters is Jesus Christ? Nothing else. Just Jesus. This is where they're at. Okay? Now, we said at the beginning, he won't turn nobody away that comes with a heart that's truly seeking him. Okay, now, one thing that it does say here in verse 39, now we've got a decision, we've seen a desire, and now there's a combination of an invitation by Jesus and a sacrifice by these two disciples, okay? The invitation in verse 39, he said unto them, come and see. Hmm. Now, in the voice version, it said... <laughs> Come and see. Follow me. And we will camp together. Now, I like this version. So that's a little snippet of some things that kind of open up the King James. Okay? King James is come and see. He says, yeah, come and see. But to come and see about Jesus, you don't lead Jesus. Okay? You follow him. All throughout the Gospels, you would hear him follow me. Now, as a matter of fact, I believe it was Philip that he ran up into in the Gospel of John and follow me. Means no words, you know. And uh, but he said, and we will camp. We will camp together. Now, coming to Jesus is about being together with Jesus, being one with Jesus. He's with you, you with him. And he said, whoever's with me, and whoever he saves, he has them in his hands. And no one can take them out of his hands. Okay? And the Father, who is greater, you're in his hands. Can't nobody take you out of his hand. Okay? We're in the hand of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And no one, once we come to Jesus, can remove us away from that. Oh, yeah, we can have some busted up broken times. We can fall off. We can trip, slip, and stumble, okay? Uh, but once saved, always saved. Just because you fall backwards in sin, I don't care what sin it is, okay? Once you are truly saved, okay, your sins have been forgiven, even the ones up ahead that you commit. Okay, doesn't give us a license to go purposefully sin, waving that get out of jail free card before God. No, that ain't that, that that's a dangerous thing to do. But 
once saved, always saved. Okay? So, it says here after this something very interesting that it says it was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon when they met Jesus. Okay? And that's interesting because it was getting late in the day. And if you look at today, okay, we are late in the day. Okay? We are late in the day where this title, it's time, you ready, okay, really should start ringing significantly to your spirit, okay? This new way, okay, Jesus Christ who described himself as the way, okay, this ain't nothing to be joking around with. You see the evidence of things going on in the world right now that are in the Bible, okay? Rumors of wars, wars, pestilence, famine, you know. You see a lot of things going on and moving in the direction that the Bible has discussed, okay? And it's late. You might be of age. But then again, even though you're a teenager, doesn't mean that you're going to make it to 21, young adult. There's no guarantee. People die in the womb. People die right after the womb. People die a week later, a month later, 5, 10, 15. There's no guarantee that you're going to make it to your next birthday. So in essence, it's late in your day. Okay? It's time to stop playing around and waiting around and hoping that something will come around, okay? Your life is what it is without Jesus, okay? Now, to those that are rolling in dollars and, and fame and fortune, and they think that that's life, you know, all I can say to them is that's death because there's a road that seems right to a human being, especially when they got that fame and fortune, but at the end, it's death. How do I know? Because the Bible says so. And up to this point, can't no man prove to me that this Bible is a lie. I've heard the typical one, especially from black folks, you know, uh, that make no sense. Okay. Um, so going back to the word here it was late and we see that it is late in, in in the days in our life right now young old okay and it's time to start thinking about your spirit and your soul okay it's really time and it says in verse 39 after they came and saw where he dwelt and abode this is the king james version with him that day for it was about the 10th hour four o'clock okay in the voice version, it says it was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they met Jesus. They came and saw where he was staying, but they got more than they imagined. Oh, I love this version. You know, I said, I'm going to speak first to the Christian. And I know somebody out there going to give me a hallelujah when I say to them, did you get more than you imagined? <laughs> When you made that decision with that desire and you accepted Jesus Christ's invitation to have him save you and, and you just said, I'm going to sacrifice it all because I know you sacrificed it all for me. I'm going to let all this go. I'm in. Where you going, Jesus? I, I, I want to go where you go. Okay. I'm in. Okay. I want to be together with you because I know my destination is heaven. Okay. But did you get more than you imagined when you came to Jesus, looking back at it all right now? I'm sure every Christian should be saying, hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, I got more than I could ever imagine when I came to Jesus. I ain't talking house, cars, boats, planes, uh, bitcoins, and, and this coin and that coin. I'm talking about in your spirit and soul, did you get more than what you anticipated? I love this version. It says, they came and saw where Jesus was staying. Okay? 
And they got more than they imagined. And they remained with him the rest of the day and followed him for the rest of their lives. Man, I love that version. Look at what it says. You see Jesus. And seeking and coming to Jesus with a heart that wants the spirit, the soul of man, to be right with God, knowing that Jesus is the way, the only way to get right with God, okay? And you come to him, and when he asks you, what you seeking? Well, why are you seeking me? What are you looking for? And you tell him, where you go, I go. I want in. I want to be together with you. I want to know where you're going, Okay? Where you go, I go. I'm all in. Okay, because these disciples, it says, when, in, in, in verse, what is it? Uh, let me see. In verse 37, when it says, the two disciples heard John about to speak, they followed Jesus. Never again do you hear these two disciples in nowhere in the Bible saying, after they encountered Jesus, they went back to their old ways. In other words, they went back to John the Baptist. So, in coming to Jesus, what we learn is you no longer want to go back to the life you had. The life you have right now, when you come to Jesus, seeking Jesus, wanting to follow Jesus, what you are basically should be saying from your heart, as we see in these two, is that point one. I'm not turning back there no more. I'm done. Jesus, where are you going? Where you, where you go? Take me, please. But we know in the Bible that's complete. Remember, this Bible was not complete back then. Okay? They didn't have that Bible. Okay? This Bible they did not have. We have the luxury, okay, a privilege of having something that's complete. Okay? Forged through the generations, okay, and complete. And we know that when we come to Jesus, where are we going? Okay, we know we're going to heaven, okay? So, the question is that God is asking when he says it's time you're ready. What he's saying is, it's time to get right with me. Are you ready to come home to me or are you going to hell with him? He going to the lake of fire. Satan going to the lake of fire. His army is going to the lake of fire. Them demons that are still being held are going to the lake of fire. All those generations before you and after you who don't believe in this word and never come to Jesus, okay, are going to be eternally tormented, okay? The question is that he's asking right now is you. You've seen what happened to the billions before. You know what's going to happen to Satan and his army. Question is, it's time. He's saying it's time now. Are you ready? Are you ready to turn like these two disciples did? Okay. And come to Jesus and tell Jesus, I want to be with you. Please accept me. I open my heart to you. Please accept me. You are the Lamb of God that John the Baptist proclaimed. Who can take away all my sins that I can be right with you. I want that. So, it said it was late in the season of the day. As it is late in the season of our lives right now. And they came to Jesus and simply said, where you go, we'd like to go, okay? And Jesus said, come on, come and see, okay? And not only did they remain with him the rest of the day, not only did they get more than they imagined, but they followed him the rest of their lives. Jesus is not, you come to him, you get saved, and then you go run off like the roadrunner back into the wilderness, Okay? That's not salvation. Once Jesus saves you, you belong to him, okay? 
You need to learn about life, okay, from him. We, we learned about this rotten, sinful life. Now we got to learn about this righteous life, okay? What is it about Jesus uh, when I came to him? Now, what is it about this life with Jesus that I need to learn? Well, the first thing that these disciples show is you got to stay with Jesus. It says they stayed with him the rest of their lives. Even when Jesus ascended to heaven, they still stayed with him because he sent his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Once you are with Jesus, you are no longer an orphan. And if you're a physical orphan right now, okay, once you have Jesus, you have a parent. You have a daddy. You are no longer an orphan, okay? But it's by faith, faithful steps that you must believe this, okay? I'm going to turn to a close because we got a couple minutes left. It, it, it's it's a, by faithful steps, okay, that we make this decision, okay? You know, you like I said, you've laid faith in your life in many areas, and you see the results. You know, there was a young lady I came across, and I've seen her for quite a while. Um, she works at a place where I, I frequent. And I overheard her talking to this older lady and she was flustered with her relationship and uh, the guy that she had, uh, the boyfriend she had, she knew all the wrong and she knew uh, the wrong that he was doing, how he's changed, how he's become even more wrongful to her. And this lady that was almost 60 was... Uh, the wisdom. We have to be careful with wisdom. And even somebody that claims to be a Christian, you have to be careful. That's why the Bible says you got to check for yourself. In Acts 17, 11, these Bereans were one of a kind. If you talk to them about the uh, about the word of God, they'd hear you. But then when they get home, they're going to check to see if you were accurate. And the way they would check is the word. Okay? So when I heard her saying the word fun, I said fun stands for falling under the night. She doesn't need to have more fun. She needs Jesus. I said she needs someone to help her to become the right uh, woman, wife, kids, servant in the relationship. Know her role, okay? And he's entrusted, a man is entrusted to lead, guide, and direct, to provide, to watch over, okay? And that's according to the word, okay? It didn't take but 30 seconds, 60 seconds when, when the Lord had me speak and she was in tears. OK. Um, and she heard me more than that woman. And when the woman walked away, I said, well, now she told you she's almost 60 and she's been divorced, I think, once or twice. And the life that she leads now is nothing about Christianity. And I say that to you because you have to watch who talks to you. I speak to you right now, not as Joseph, but as a servant of Jesus Christ. One who gave his life to Jesus. And when Jesus asked me, why did I come to him? I said, I need you to save me. I'm a sinner. And I need help. And the help I need is to be right with you. I, I'm overwhelmed, overmatched in this life of sin. And I have no way out. And you are the way. You are a new way from, that I, I'd like to take embark on. Okay? And when I embark on a new way with you the way, I'm not turning back. I'm going to do what these two disciples did. I am not going to turn back. I'm all in. Okay? And if you're at that point right now, just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. And I know you are the Savior. You are the Savior of the world. You are my personal Savior. And I'd like you to be my personal Savior. And in doing so, Get rid of these sins. Get rid of this monstrosity of sins off my back. Give me peace with you and let me learn of you. I want to be together with you like they were. I want to go where you take me. But I want to follow and I want you to teach me. Save me, Lord Jesus. I believe you died for me on that cross. And I believe you rose for me to give me a hope. If you confess that, believing in your heart, wanting this like they did, count yourself saved. Tune in next week and the weeks after as the Lord gives you his grace. My name is Pastor Joseph from the Lighthouse. I love you. Uh, I give God the glory to the one that was saved out here today. And I love you, Lord. I love you all out there. 
I wish you uh, a blessed rest of the day and even more blessed week. Uh, Pastor Joseph, good day.